We are on the beach again, and I guess by now, you know what that means. There is a new camera. Let's say you want a camera that has all the amazing features top Sony cameras have. Like this Sony FX3, a Netflix approved 12 megapixel full frame sensor camera, or its sibling, Sony Alpha 7S3 which can both see in the dark. So you can film wherever you like, even in the middle of the night, without a light. I think that rhymed. Well, all right. You want all resolutions, all frame rates up to 4K 120 frames per second, without line skipping, without pixel binning, or without crop or that sweet spot while you're shooting an S-Log when you switch to ISO 12,800 when that image clears up maybe you want that look at you you know what's up <laughs> but you also want a camera that has AI processing unit like Sony Alpha 7 R5 so you can register faces, remember faces, and keep the focus on that face. But also you want to focus on animals, insects, birds, cars, trains, and planes. You want all that creme, de la creme. Like this good stuff. But you're also like, I want those features on the ZV cameras that makes things super simple for beginners or lazy shooters. So you go to Sony and tell them you want all of those in a camera and Sony goes, sure, what else? You say, I want dynamic active stabilization and electronic image stabilization that stabilizes more than the active stabilization. Sony goes, sure, what else? I want AI to do more, like auto frame a subject. Sony goes, sure. What else? I want a feature called cinematic vlog where it sets the camera to 4K24 and I can adjust the mood I want and start shooting without fiddling with any other settings. Sony goes, sure. What else? I want a camera that changes the aperture when someone else walks into the frame so we are both in focus. But then you go, wait, I'm not done. Just to make the current Sony camera owners jealous, I want my camera to have 4K30 streaming options to the computer. When I connect it, I want 4K30. Sony goes, sure. But those are fantastic features we have on our top cameras. And they cost this much. How much are you willing to pay? So you go, meh, maybe almost half of that. Sony goes, okay. This is ZV-E1. Sony's brand new camera for video first content creators. ZV-E1 has 12 megapixel back illuminated Exmor R CMOS full frame sensor that we absolutely love from Sony FX3 and Alpha 7S3. It can shoot all intra H.264 or H.265 videos up to 4K 120 frames per second in 10-bit 422. It is small, light, extremely capable, and it costs $2,200. So I guess the question is, is it any good?
All right, let's talk about specs and features. It has the quick menu that we know and love from FX3. You can import your own LUTs and you can display those LUTs while watching back a video or when you connect your device to a monitor. It has a three capsule microphone which you can adjust the direction or you can leave it at auto and it decides where the talking is coming from. All right, so we have the setting for the microphone directivity. This is auto and then this is front. This is all directions and this is rear. Now it's set to front. By the way, the active stabilization is on and I am walking. Now this is set to back and it must be a little muffled because it is built. So you can hold the camera this way and sh talk to the camera. And connect this wind diffuser, which looks like the hair from the guy who sings at Panic at the Disco. You can connect it here and it's a wind diffuser. But this is also a hot shoe mount that supports MI interface. Meaning you can plug in ECM B10, ECM B1M, ECM G1, and ECM W2BT, which is the wireless microphone. It has a still video SNQ button, which is very firm. You will not be changing modes by accident. There's a dedicated record button. We have a really nice tally light that you can see from this angle. You can see from this angle. Also the frame, if you want, gets that red circle around it. The on off button is here right next to zoom in and out rocker, which is right underneath the shutter button. And all of this is designed so well. They're so close to each other and you can reach whatever you want very efficiently and easily and you don't mix them up. So that's really nice. Behind that we have the C1 button which is customizable but by default it is set to background defocus. If you don't know what background defocus is simply by just clicking on a button as you can see the things that are in the background are in focus now and you, when I tap on it again they go out of focus. It changes basically the aperture for you to bring things in focus. They're filming. That explains all this stuff. Let's use the background defocus to show you. See all that stuff? Surfboards and uh, umbrellas. I think those guys are making that happen. Okay, back to me turning uh, background defocus and if I hit menu I think we're gonna get out of the background defocus thingy yes here we go and then right here we have the aperture dial at the back right here we have the menu button which is great because it's right underneath your thumb where you're holding the camera it is really easy to reach the LCD is of course touch screen also you can swipe from bottom up for FM menu and you can swipe from right to left to go into this menu where you find more features and you can get out of it by simply swiping right or from the left side of the screen you can do the same thing as well. Next to that we have the C2 button where we can use step zoom. What step zoom does is Instead of using this zoom rocker and zooming in and out slowly, with step zoom you can zoom in and out like this. It's clear image zoom by the way, so you're not losing image quality. Or you can zoom in using the rocker. Then of course we have the FN button and then we have the control wheel which is all customizable and just like FX3 by default the control wheel controls the shutter speed and then of course we have the playback button to see the footage we shot and next to that we have the trash can button which also triggers the showcase mode what showcase mode does is it turns off the eye auto focus when the showcase mode is off as you can see the focus is around my eye and there's an indicator next to it so if I hold something, it's not going to switch the focus to that. It's going to keep the focus in my eye because that's how we like. But if I switch to showcase mode, whenever I hold something closer to the lens, it's just going to switch to that. One thing about this feature is you cannot turn it 
off while you're recording. You gotta stop recording and then you can turn it off. Even though this handle is small, it is not very uncomfortable because the camera is only 483 grams. To put that in perspective, A7C is 509, FX30 is 646, A7S3 is 699, and FX3 is 715 grams. So this camera is pretty light. Okay, let's talk about the grip because now that I've been using it in real life with different lenses, of course, when the lens gets heavier, it really doesn't matter that much how light the camera is. So when you have a heavier lens on... Hold on, there's a, there's a dog. Decide. Come on. Here, decide. <laughs> Sorry. No worries. So when the lens is bigger, then, um, yeah, then it feels like the camera is slippery. So you have to watch out. And when it comes to battery, Good news, it has the battery that we know and love, the Z battery, which gives this camera 570 photo and 95 minute of video recording capabilities, according to Sony. Well, I don't know why companies do this, knowing that we're gonna run our own tests and give you the results. And once again, I apologize to Sony but that's not what my finding is. I recorded 4K 24 frames per second in S-Log3 and I was able to record for 2 hours, 5 minutes and 52 seconds before this camera overheated and shut down. And then I turned the camera back on immediately and started recording again and it recorded for 13 minutes and 45 seconds. So in total, I was able to record 138 minutes. By the way, the room temperature was 24 degrees Celsius. And then I switched to 4K 60 frames per second and did the same test again. And in 32 minutes, ZV-E1 overheated and shut down. And when I did that, the room temperature was 24.4 Celsius. But on casual use, I had no problems. But if you're leaving the camera on somewhere, especially indoors, under studio lights and stuff like that, you gotta watch out a little bit. It has a USB-C button. It has a USB-C port where you can power up the camera as well. It has single SD card slot. It can take up to UHS-2 and V90, which is required for high frame recording. It has microphone in. It has headphone out and it has a micro HDMI port. don't say this and I usually leave it up to the viewer to decide but this time if you're on the edge if you're on the fence I'm gonna give you that little push using this camera has been a delight it is fantastic so if you're thinking about it just stop thinking about it and order it right now and start creating content that you wanted to create because this camera will get stuff done you will get the footage you are looking for and you want to get something that makes fx3 owners a7s3 owners jealous just go ahead and pre-order this order this you're not going to be sorry you're going to be very happy with this camera it's going to last you for years and years to come if this camera existed when i did the jump to full frame sensor cameras i probably would be done looking for cameras for a really long time. I wouldn't even, you know, look at other cameras for a really long time. And this is what's gonna happen for the owners of ZV-E1. Get this camera, get the 20 millimeter lens. Don't get it with the kit lens, get the 20 millimeter lens or maybe get 16 to 35, but I suggest 20 millimeter and throw on a Nissi or Moment ND filter on it for the times when you're gonna be outside and you're done you're done you'll be happy this camera has all the features that we wanted 
for FX3 or Alpha 7S3. This has variable shutter, focus breathing compensation, focus mapping. By the way, the variable shutter we have in this camera is different than what we have in Alpha 7.4 or Alpha 7R5 or Alpha 1. This one has a feature called anti-flicker TV scan where you hold your camera towards something that is flickering like this light over there and then you click on the button and it figures out and sets the shutter speed accordingly and while you're in variable shutter mode this dial changes the shutter in bigger increments than what you would get with this so it makes things a lot easier my fx3 cannot do any of that any of it if something is flickering good luck i wish you good luck i seriously feel like because this camera has these features now and there's a new creators app for sony cameras i i bet we're gonna get a firmware update for these two and maybe for a1 that is finally gonna bring those features that we've all been asking for and then we're gonna celebrate we're gonna celebrate that's what i want to believe all zv cameras beside being gen z vlogging cameras they usually are more budget friendly and that is why they lack some of the features but it's not the end of the world you can still make things work kind of cameras but not this one this one is really good let's talk about other features this camera has dynamic active stabilization now usually on our sony cameras we have a couple of stabilization modes the first one is off where the uh, sensor is not moving at all which is great when you mount your camera on a, in a car or something so you don't want the sensor to start wobbling with the with the vibration coming from the car that's when you use the off mode and then we have standard mode where the sensor moves a little bit which is great if you're just standing handheld shooting something and then we have the active mode and on the active mode the sensor moves a little bit more but in return the footage gets cropped a little bit but you get more stabilization but now we have the dynamic active mode the camera applies electronic image stabilization to the footage let me show you okay now we are in off mode I'm shaking the camera. Now we are in standard mode. I am shaking the camera. Active mode. The dynamic active mode. So I think I can say that dynamic active mode consists of very little optical and a lot of electronic image stabilization. What that means is when you get the footage out of the camera, it's going to look more stable than active stabilization. However, that costs 30% crop to the image. And when the dynamic active is turned on with 20 millimeter f1.8, this is arm's length. So as you can see, we are kind of close up to my face, but I think it's doable. It's not that bad. There's a new feature in this camera that no other Sony camera has, and that is called AI-based auto framing. And what that does is when you turn it on, you tap on the subject or it selects it automatically and start zooming in to that subject. The great thing about that is it adds a dynamic feel to the footage. So if you have cameras like mine just static just standing there you can turn that feature on and it kind of follows you left and right as you move and it zooms in and out with increments if you want for example every 15 seconds it zooms in and then zooms out and you, or you can set it to 30 seconds okay now we're testing out the ai based auto framing as you can see it is zooming in and out by itself i'm recording the cropped version of this footage into the camera and I'm this, uh, recording the screen of the camera on my Atomos, but I also could have recorded the uncropped version either on my external recorder or in the camera, or both or none. It's all up to you. So 
As you can see, if I move around, let's wait for it to zoom back in. Let's say if this is like a podcast situation and people are talking. See, as you can see, if I when I move around, the frame moves with me. But of course, this is not an actual zoom. This is a digital zoom. I wish it also did this in a vertical aspect ratio so I can post it on other social platforms as well. Now, this seems to be zooming in a lot out quite often. Let's uh, switch to the 30 second setting and see how that look, what that looks like. Switch to 30, maybe drop down the crop level to medium. Frame tracking speed three is good. We're recording to the camera and HDMI output does not record. So well, this is how that one works. Maybe this is a little better. It's a good feature. Now, let's see how much we can push this out of focus. Of course, I don't think it's gonna do anything when I put the sunglasses on. Yep, we're still there. Well, if I wear a beanie, we're still good. I also have the beard and then Well, there's almost nothing left, but it still detects me. Let's turn around. And turn back. Yep. Yep, the AI autofocus is doing wonders again. We also have another feature called framing stabilizer, and that works with dynamic active stabilization. You can either have your object in the center of the screen or you can compose the shot yourself and it keeps that object or subject wherever you like while you're moving around. Which is a great feature, but this feature adds 50% crop and it doesn't work in manual focus. So now I locked the composition. As you can see, it is tracking the top of that so let's see if i walk around what's gonna happen because this should be the composition this is normally something you would get with a gimbal I think it's trying, but it's not easy while holding the camera and the phone at the same time. So I'm going to do it one without the phone. And here it is. I locked the composition and started walking away from the subject. This, this is completely handheld. No ninja walking, no nothing. I have to say, this is not a bad feature at all. Another new feature we have in this camera that no other camera has is called cinematic vlog mode. And when you select that, it starts recording in 4K 24, 23.98 to be exact, because that's the proper cinematic mode. And then it gives you option to pick a look and mood and AF autofocus transition speed. And then it takes care of the rest by itself. It puts bar at the top and the bottom. So the footage you get out of this camera is 2.35 to one. So you can switch to that mode, take this camera and get the cinematic footage you want. Something is being filmed here. I thought I would come here with my cine vlog setting and then make them jealous. I don't think I can go through them, but I wish I did. Let's see. I mean, I can all already see that they're super jealous because they don't have such features on their cameras. So, yeah. Everyone's jealous. I can see them. I can see in their eyes. Is it raining? If it's raining, it's time to go back home. I'm done with the rain.
comes to intervals shooting, which is something we wanted for years and then Sony finally put it in our cameras, what you usually get is the photo files and then you put them together yourself. With this camera, if you're in the video mode, interval, interval recording now records as a video file. If you switch to photo mode, it records photo files and then you can put them together, which is fantastic. So now right out of the camera, you can have a video time lapse and it gives you a simple and fast option to share the footage you get. Just like Alpha 7 R5, it has face memory where you can register faces. So when you're holding this camera towards a couple of people, the registered face you pick stays in focus. The camera focuses on that person. And this is usually the example we give, but let's say you're a wedding videographer, it's a great way to keep the bride in focus. However, there's another feature which is my favorite feature in this camera and that is called multiple face recognition. And that only works in intelligent auto mode. I hope it comes to the other uh, modes as well. When someone else walks into the frame, it adjusts the aperture to a number that's gonna have you and the other person in focus. So that's a really useful feature, especially shooting with the 50 millimeter f1.2 here. Whenever I have someone else next to me, if someone's sitting a little forward or the other one's a little back, always one of us is out of focus. But with a feature like that, the aperture will adjust itself accordingly and both of the people are going to be in focus. I also hope uh, with a firmware update in the future, we'll be able to pick multiple faces from the face memory. So for example, it keeps the focus of the bride and the groom. As I mentioned before, this camera can stream up to 4K 30 frames per second. None of these can. So when you connect this to your computer as a webcam for your Zoom call or whatever streaming, you get the 4K 30 frames per second footage out of this camera. And besides all of that, Sony added tons of accessibility features to this camera for everyone to enjoy and capture the footage they want. We talked about all the stuff I really like, all the new features. Let's talk about some things I think you should know. This camera, just like the other ZV cameras, is not weather sealed. It is dust and moisture proof, but it is not weather sealed, so I would not like to be outside in the rain with the camera that has a microphone grill like that. LCD screen is 1.04 million dots. So it's not the best, but it's not the worst either. But I know some people don't like it. It gets the job done and I'm pretty sure it consumes less uh, power. As I mentioned before, this camera has micro HDMI port and I wasn't even able to remember where my micro HDMI cable is. So I asked my friend Gerald to send me one, which he did. If you want cables, cables. go with Gerald Undone cables. cables. This cable is purple and it supports Gerald Undone. Ah, I made a flower with it. This camera compared to the others is more likely to overheat. So when it comes to overheating, it, it is something you have to look out for. Besides the grip not being deep enough for my hands, this part here doesn't stick out a lot. So the camera doesn't really hold your hand, if you know what I mean. This camera holds, holds your fingers and hand. And like this part really sits in your hand. You're holding hands with your camera, basically. With this one, you are holding the camera just like the other uh, ZV cameras. So I wish this was a little bigger so it's easier to hold in hand. Single SD card can be risky if you're doing professional work. You may want a camera that has dual SD card slots where it can record simultaneously to two memory cards. So if one of them dies, the other one will survive. It doesn't support 
CF Express Type A. Of course, you can overcome this by getting an external recorder and recording to that external recorder as well. No EVF, as you can see. Sometimes I feel the need for EVF using my FX3 because I use FX3 quite a lot, especially when I'm outside. But when it comes to mounting this inside the car where the windshield is, I really prefer camera bodies without EVF because sometimes this gets in the way and I cannot adjust the angle the way I want. 4K 120 frames per second is gonna come to this camera with a firmware update that is coming in June 2023. And I think in some countries that is going to be a paid upgrade. If you turn on lock shooting or choose a PP lot from the picture profile menu, the HDMI output gets limited to 1080p, but you can go to your picture profile menu and change any of the picture profiles to SLAC3 and you can get the 4K HDMI output with SLAG that way. And that's all the complaints I have. But other than that, right out of the box, this camera is ready to go, especially having the microphone on it. You don't need to get an extra microphone. As I mentioned before, get the 20 millimeter f1.8. You're gonna love it. Throw on some ND variable ND filters, get the Nissi or Moment ND filters. I love those. I've been using them quite a lot. That's why I've been mentioning those two brands. I'm, I'm really happy. Get those, throw them on there. And in time, if you want, you can get ECM B10 or similar microphones for better audio and upgrade that way. But other than that, this is a really exciting camera and I think it's gonna make a lot of content creators really happy and hopefully this is a sign that the long awaited firmware update is finally coming to our babies over here. Of course, no camera test is done without the tunnel test but for this one i have a lot of hopes because this is a 12 megapixel full frame sensor a gigantic sensor that is born to see in the dark like bane what i'm gonna do now is i'm gonna set everything to auto but also i'm gonna set it to cinetone to see what that does because Recently I was with Jonathan Morrison and I heard that they use Cinetone quite a lot. Okay, As Cinetone, everything is set to auto. Tunnel test. Here we go. I don't think there's gonna be much surprises on this one. Entering the tunnel in three, two, one. Here we go. There you go. I can't even be overexposed right now. I also is at 1,800, 600, 400, 320. We're about to exit the tunnel. Didn't even get phased. Okay, we're good. 